Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invests. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Western Areas Limited. This is a nickel mining company. So I've been paying close attention to nickel miners um, during the past year or so because I think, well, I am fairly bullish about the short to medium term uh, future for nickel just because its relationship to uh, electric vehicles and batteries. And I think uh, the focus has been on lithium the last few years, but I think uh, nickel has the better future. And simply because lithium, there's a lot of hype around it. Uh, a lot of companies have been trying to get in lithium. And to be frank with you, there's abundance amount of lithium out there and it's all over the place. And you'll find if uh, lithium prices start going up, you're gonna see a lot of mining of lithium. Nickel, I think it is Elon Musk sort of pleaded with miners to mine more nickel. So we definitely gonna need more nickel. There is even indications we're gonna be um, uh, the supply will be vastly lower than the demand in the next few years. So fairly bullish with the long or short to medium term nature of nickel. But uh, as I said, it's all about the short to medium term. I never hold a mining company long term just because of the cyclical nature of mining. And whenever you get a, a material or a metal that's at the high price, so iron ore right now is at the high price, you always find more mines come online to try to get some more of that cash flow that's coming into like Fortescue and then you eventually see the iron, iron ore prices go down. Uh, conversely, probably a good time to start thinking about getting into uranium. Uh, without doubt, I think the uranium future looks pretty bright and uranium has been downtrodden for 10 years or so and very few uranium mining companies out there. So when we start to see that start to get uptick, those uranium mining companies would be a fairly bullish to get into. But I uh, sort of digress from what I'm going to talk about here. So Western Areas put out a production downgrade on Friday the 30th of October. The market reacted, as you would expect, fairly negative towards that announcement. So let's get into that production downgrade. So oh, this is straight from their announcement. Uh, they've got original guidance and revised guidance. Now what's happened is that they've had some material downgrades, so, so lower grade ore are being mined at two of their mines, uh, Flying Fox Mine and Spotted Quoll Mine. That's one thing I do like about Western Areas is some of the names they give it. So, and not only that, uh, lower grade, less uh, production, the, the cash costs of, of production have been raised a little bit too. So no doubt, I think some of the numbers that will be coming in for this financial year will be in a little bit lower than the last financial year. So this is just a financial year snapshot compared to what happened in financial year 19. So, uh, I mean, they just mentioned there the highest profit result in seven years. The one thing I don't look at is really profit. I look at cash flow, price to book. Um, and one thing you'll notice here, if you go down towards cash flow from operations, which was fairly high, it increased from 98 million to 120 million, based mostly because of uh, increases in nickel prices. But just below that, you'll see growth and sustaining capital expenditure, which was almost identical to cash flow. So all the cash they're getting, they're spending in <coughs> capital expenditure. <coughs> so uh, they do have a mine coming online soon. Um, and most of the capital expenditure is going towards that mine. So there's there's two capital expenditures can be broken into two parts. It's the growth capital expenditure, which is great because that sort of capital expenditure is should fuel share prices increase, should increase valuations of the company. So we have the growth capital expenditure. We also have maintenance, or what they call sustaining capital expenditure, and that's just to maintain the day to day goings on of the business. 100% of capital expenditure is going towards sustaining or maintenance, um, that's not a good thing. I'd like to see companies sort of break down the capital expenditure into those two um, segments. I've seen one company do it, it was Mitchell Services, and it sort of gives you a guide to what they're spending the capital expenditure on. A rough estimate is 50% to each, but that's just a rough estimate. So what else about this slide? Um, that's about it. Um, yeah, so $144.8 million in cash, zero debt. So that gives two big ticks. And looks like everything has been fueled by, in, all, the, all the profit increases, cash flow increases have been fueled by higher nickel prices. So as you can see, nickel prices are fueled going or the financial state of this company, as they do for all mining companies. 
And that's why there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like to buy mining companies because they are profit uh, takers, not profit makers, because they have to, their profit is wholly dependent on the price of the mineral or metal they're mining. So what I've done here is just taken about 14 years of financial data and just to compare from year to year, uh, I like to do this just to see how it's going. You can see when you look at revenue here, uh, 2011 was the peak in revenue, operating cash flow, share price, market. So it was the peak. 2011 was when Western areas reached their peak. I think the share price may have not reached a peak then. Uh, it was the reached a peak in 2008. That was the market getting a little bit ahead of itself. In fact, the share price uh, yeah, dropped by about half from 2008 to 2011. But ever since then, we've seen you know the revenue, operating cash flow just fluctuate, which is sort of indicating probably the fluctuation in nickel prices, and the same thing with market cap and enterprise value. If you don't know what MC is, that's market cap. EV is enterprise value. One, two things I always look at is price to book ratio, and I like to see really low numbers there. So you can see 2019, 1.07, and currently it's 1.22, which suggests that Western Areas is on the cheap side when you look at historical values. And the last thing I look at is enterprise value to operating cash flow. So just looking at how much cash the company is bringing in compared to how much it's worth or the market is, is valuing the company. And we've seen the last uh, few years, it get down to about four. Uh, and right now it's 4.18, which is also suggesting it's at the low end of its historical valuation. So when you look at the finances, Western areas is at the low end of its valuation. So the other thing I like to look at for mining companies is just to see what they've got in the pipeline. Now I'm going to see if I can pronounce uh, the mine that's coming online soon, Odysseus. Odysseus, Odysseus, hopefully I got that right, Odysseus. Uh, so that's coming online soon. Now I don't, I'm not the biggest uh, expert in to judge how good a mine is, but they've got the nickel resources and nickel reserves there, which uh, especially the reserves have gone up the last few years, probably because of Odysseus. There, yeah, I just said it really well then, awesome. And then even past uh, after Odysseus, they've got some other mines coming online too. Um, and which is good because I think the other two mines that I was looking at, Flying Fox and Spotted Quoll, they have a limited uh, lifetime, mining lifetime, a few years, like two years to five years. So they need these other mines to come online uh, within that time frame to sustain the ongoing valuation of the company. So of course, I've gone through the financials, the mining pipeline. So next thing I'm going to look at is the charts. So I always look at finances and charts. You can't look at one without the other to know what's going on with the business. So this is the eight year weekly chart, just going back eight years. And you can see here, um, really, this is probably shows you why I never be in mines long term. Uh, because if you bought, say, uh, at any time along this, um, if you just held at any time, bought and held, you wouldn't have made any money because it's uh, right at the low point at the moment. So. $2 has been support for years. So every time it's reached around $2, between about $1.80 and $2, it's always bounced off that, which suggests that's a good area of support. And right now we're at $1.93. But to me, this is also looks like a sort of def descending triangle. So the highs keep dropping. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not the biggest uh, expert on this, these sort of things, but whether you can, whether descending triangle can last uh, a decade or so or in its formation I am not sure but I think the two dollar support line has been there for a long time and that's definitely support which is indicating the possibility that two dollars could be a good or anything less than two dollars could be a good place to buy and then when the share price gets like to three dollars fifty to four dollars that's when you would sell and then I'm just going to go to the 11 year monthly chart and it does look like a, a nice forming uh, descending triangle uh, and again, I'm not sure if you can a uh, descending triangle can form over 10 years or decade. A uh, descending triangle is bullish. I mean bearish. Sorry, bearish. Um, what it, it's a very psychological thing because you see the share price go up, and then, then the next time it goes up and reaches that that sort of that peak, it can't quite get to the previous high, and that keeps happening. And that's just just uh, people are, or investors are less willing to pay as much for the company. And then as soon as it gets to $2, you see the share price rise because uh, sort of a natural thing is you see that 
price gets to that level, you think, oh, it's a buying level. Right now, it's a buying level. But uh, because that slope downward, that part of the sloping in the descending triangle, eventually that, that uh, horizontal support level and the descending part of the descending triangle, they sort of come towards each other, and that's when the share price will break down past $2, and that support line is no longer support. It becomes resistance. Hope all that makes hope all that makes sense. So that's all I've got on Western areas for today. Um, so this is one of the nickel companies I've been looking at. I've been looking at quite a few nickel companies, and just because I had an announcement on the 30th of October, I thought I'd just do a little video on the company. Um, yeah, so probably now is about a good time to buy. Uh, just look at the share price. I'm going to look at the share price action over the next few days. Uh, the markets might be down. We we're down quite big last week. I think it was like the biggest weekly a loss we've had since April or something, I don't know. But, um, well, and we've also got the American election next week, so there could be some bit of volatility around the election and the outcome of the election. Who knows? There could be riots in the streets with the outcome either way. So it may be a good week not to buy and just see how, where the dust settles. That's what I'm going to be doing this week. And Western Areas is now on my potential buy list just because of where the share price is. I'll do a little bit more research on the company and see what sort of mines uh, that, that Odysseus and see, you know, the feelings around Odysseus coming online soon. So uh, leave any comments if you are a share owner, shareholder of Western Areas. And I'm not a financial advisor, so any advice I'm giving in this video, don't take it literally. I'm just doing this for educational, educational entertainment and research purposes. And the research purposes is mainly for myself. So that's all for today. Have a good day. Bye.